First, let me preface this video by saying that this is not an endorsement for any candidate. Uh, I've been a registered independent since I was 18, and as a person who's been closely following political events, I just want to give my analysis based on the trends that I've observed. So with that, let's jump right in. So point number six is this. Although both candidates are largely unfavored by the public, Hillary's untrustworthiness and long-standing political record as an, as an establishment candidate with Wall Street ties is going to be a greater hindrance to her unfavorability than the non-politician Trump. One of his biggest strengths has been all along that he's not a career politician, whereas Hillary Clinton has been involved with politics since she was 17, first as a Goldwater girl in 1964. For all those who, are, who do not know who Barry Goldwater is, I urge you to Google who he is. Then later, in other supporting capacities throughout the 70s and 80s, she was politically active. Of course, as First Lady in the 90s, uh, Senator of New York in the 2000s, and then later on as Secretary of State with the Obama administration. In each of these official roles, she's been followed by controversy. While she was First Lady, in defense of Bill Clinton's heinous Three Strikes You're Out crime bill, she actually referred to black urban kids as super predators, lobbying hard at the time for, again, Three Strikes Life in Prison legislation, which puts people in cages you know, for accumulating some of the smallest infractions at a great cost not only of human potential, uh, but people's lives and liberty and happiness, and also a great cost to the taxpayer, so to incarcerate them. In most cases, the three strikes are nonviolent drug offenses. Then, as a senator of New York during the George W. Bush presidency, she supported all of, of Bush's military actions, all of his non-Congress-sanctioned military actions, did not support gay marriage until 2013 when it became politically convenient, did not support a slew of other left-wing social issues that were prominent at the time. In fact, her track record very much paints a politician who looks very much right-wing. Her voting record is nearly identical to someone like, say, Mitt Romney, who, by the way, endorsed Hillary, if you know, if you don't know this. Lastly, in her role as Secretary of State, Clinton has taken a lot of heat over the 2012 Benghazi attack in Libya that left four American citizens killed. Now, questions and criticisms have since continued to fly around here over the role that she played as then Secretary of State. Or rather, her failure, not, not her role directly, but rather her failure to do anything about it. Then she, under political pressure, apologized. But what's hilarious about it is that she's now redacted that apology, restating that she is in no way at fault when questioned during this political presidential run because of Trump's relentless attacks in interviews and on Twitter. Reason number five, the FBI investigation. I'm listing the FBI investigation as its own reason alone for a variety of reasons. One being that uh, it's so recent and it's been a huge issue on the campaign trail and since it has subsequently ended, air quotes, with no wrongdoing, of course, uh, this just feeds Trump's crooked Hillary narrative. Now, what's hilarious is that FBI Director James Comey came out, recommended no criminal charges against Hillary for her handling of classified emails while she was Secretary of State. You know, the internet was livid about this. Not so much from the Republican establishment, mind you, because it's obvious from their huge opposition to Trump that they would rather back Hillary. As I said, Romney has already come out in favor, and also many big sort of traditional Republican donors have come out in favor of her, sort of behind the scenes because they didn't want to connect themselves to her publicly for her sake. You know, because these people absolutely need to make sure that their corporate drone gets into the White House, regardless of whether they have an R after their name or a D. But a large chunk of the outrage came from, for some, a surprising place. 
There were at least as many Bernie supporters as Trump publicans. Even CNN's audience, which tends to be supportive of Hillary, thought there should be at least a slap on the wrist, some action. Of course, no, no charges were filed, but James Comey, the FBI director, he was as harsh as he possibly could be without, have, without being able to file actual charges in his damnation of Clinton. You could tell that he really wanted to do something about this, to not let this go, but, you know, this is the Clintons we're talking about. So, he basically said, well, we can't file charges against her because there's no evidence, but it wasn't wrongdoing, air quotes, anyway. It was just, and this is hilarious, it was just extremely careless. Now, this is a woman who's running for President of the United States, For him to come out on national TV and say nationally, Miss Clinton is not a criminal, but she's extremely careless. Does that sound like someone that you would vote for to occupy the highest office in the most powerful military nation in the world? The FBI director is going on national TV and he's saying the Democratic Party's front runner is extremely careless. Extremely careless. Those were his exact words. Quote, Do you think that won't influence voters at all? I mean, maybe not her Hillary bots in the DNC, but independents like me, who, by the way, are at record high numbers. 2013 Gallup survey found that 42% of Americans are registered as independents. A record high. 42% in 2013. And compare that with... 2010 Gallup poll where it was 31% of Americans were independent voters. So this is more than a 10% increase in just three years. People are abandoning this two-party duopoly in droves. We all fucking know this shit is corrupt. We all know this. And this election cycle is a boiling point. Alright, reason number four. They both made crappy VP picks. Now... This is a video, actually, that I've been meaning to make for a long time. I've thought that Trump was pretty much a shoe in for president for a while. But my only caveat being the, what the VP picks would be. I thought one of... Depending on which one picked who or what, that could decide the election. So now that that's come out, we know who both people are, I decided to make this video. That's what I've been waiting on. So first, Trump. He makes this really crappy pick with Mike Pence. Not known for being good on trade deals, not known for being good on uh, LGBT stuff, which Trump is kind of trying to make part of his message. But, you know, albeit better than someone like Newt Gingrich or Chris Christie, which would have certainly spelled doom for his campaign. But, you know, Pence is not great. He tarnishes Trump's quote-unquote outsider status by having been pro-TPP in the past. And like I said, having generally anti-LGBT positions. His only credit is, if you could call it as such, is that he's been completely unknown to the American public at large. When the news reports started coming in before the official announcement had been made, I was sure that this was a tactical move. To dominate the media cycle, as he's known to do, fake everyone out with a highly publicized pick, and then present the true choice later on. But, you know, I was wrong. And it ended up being Pence after all. And it was a very anticlimactic announcement when it finally came down the pipe. An ideal choice, I think, would have been someone like Rand Paul. Uh, Then he would have, undoubtedly, he would have surged in the polls. But that was unlikely to happen given the bad blood between them that developed during the primary race. And I suppose Rand probably wouldn't want to tarnish his image by connecting himself to Trump, you know, in future elections, should Trump go down in flames, which is also, it still could happen. Undoubtedly, I think the the choice of Rand Paul, you know, he would have surged with uh, independent voters. He would have surged probably with the business Democrats who are more concerned with the economy than social issues like abortion or gay marriage or, you know, LGBT bathroom rights or or, uh, any of these types of things. Which are Supreme Court decisions, by the way, that can't be overturned by the president anyway. A lot of people in the media don't seem to 
they don't seem to understand the way that the branches of government work or how our system is, is designed to, se- to separate powers. That the, the president is not a god emperor. So anyway, despite the doom and gloom, Trump is in an American Mussolini rhetoric that you hear from publications like Vox and Salon. Trump is not likely to overturn abortion or any of these things. And probably Pence isn't either. But they are in a stronger position to put people in there that might make hasty decisions that restrict you know, individual choice. For a moment there, social media seemed to be nonplussed by this. And, you know, why did Trump decide on Pence of all people? And some theorized it might have been a concession with the RNC, so they wouldn't deny him the nomination, which is totally plausible. Now, I really thought Trump might have thrown away any any edge he had on Hillary with this. Because I thought if she chooses a strong running mate, someone who's a progressive, which... I, did, I, th- I was really up in the air. I knew it wasn't going to be Bernie Sanders, but it was up in the air. But I thought, you know, he's got the, e- he's not gonna, he's, he might lose the edge if she makes a good choice, or at least a better choice than this guy Pence, which he set the bar pretty low with. But holy shit. I mean, you know, so then Hillary announced her pick. Hillary Clinton's gambling big on this guy, Tim Kaine. This is the same Tim Kaine. He's also an unknown, but... I mean, obviously, same thing with Pence. As soon as the pick is made public, everyone's going to be digging up dirt. So, this is the same Tim Kaine who opposes abortion on religious grounds. Meanwhile, the R- at the RNC, Republicans openly cheer a gay man, Peter Thiel, on the, on the main stage. He says, and there's a clip, and you can watch this, I'm proud to be gay. Cheers. Now, this is a very different atmosphere from, say, four years ago when, you know, someone like Rick Perry was running and he says, you know, we've killed more people in Texas and everyone's cheering. And of course, to the rest of the nation, that seems heartless and people are not voting for a Republican. They're voting for Trump. This is the difference. A lot of people don't seem to be able to wrap their mind around that yet. There's a huge party shift that many are still largely unaware of and I think willfully so in in most cases, especially among pundits and and media bigwigs who still use the same kind of attack strategies on Trump as they would on someone like Romney or or even a George W. Bush, and it doesn't work because this is a different type of guy. This is a Trump-publican. This is not a Republican. This is a different type of beast altogether. This kind of anti-Romney-style attacks that you're seeing from people on the left, they're not working. Some of the current theories regarding this this Tim Kaine pick for Hillary is that she's fixating, overly fixating, myopically, on winning the swing state of Virginia. And I guess if she hinges it all on winning a, a swing state somehow, and that'll translate maybe to some of the surrounding states, maybe some kind of regional domino fall. I don't know. I mean, it is. It's, I find it very strange. And I just wonder, what the hell is her campaign thinking? If her... If her plan is to fully alienate progressives and the youth voting bloc, she is succeeding. Is that her plan? Because I really can't tell. Any fact-checking, as I said, on so immediately you're going to get fact-checking as soon as choices are dropped, names are dropped, choices are made. Any fact-checking on Tim Kaine will show that he's not that far to the left. And she's still trying to woo the, the Bernie people. She's still trying to woo the Bernie Sanders supporters who are incredibly progressive and incredibly left-wing some would say to a fault and she's trying to woo these people and she picks this guy Tim Kaine who is also this guy has his own ties to Wall Street and business interests and all of the things all the kind of corporate the ideas of corporate corruption corruption that turn people off to Hillary in the first place that gives her a bad name that kind of slimes her name it gives her that sort of corporate shillery moniker that's been haunting her. And if she think, thinks that this guy's going to offset that, again, I don't understand what her campaign is thinking. I don't know how much, I don't know how privy she is to the decision making by the campaign. If she's personally, if she personally picked him or if it was maybe the donor class decided like, no, this is our guy. Because it almost seems as though the donor class 
takes such importance over what's happening that they're even willing to throw away their chances at winning. It seems crazy. If Hillary's general election strategy is to move further center to try and rival Trump's populism, she's going to crash and burn hard. Real hard. And speaking of burn, this guy, this unknown guy, Tim Kaine, he's so, he's, he's not a progressive. He's not going to reabsorb the Bernie bros, quote unquote, Bernie bros. Even now as I make this video, the DNC is going on and... You know, Sarah Silverman just told basically Bernie supporters, hey, shut your mouths. You will accept the coronation of, of Queen Hillary. So, I mean, things are not going well right now. Elizabeth Warren would have been a better pick than Tim Kaine, even though it would have hurt her progressive street cred, you know, more than it would have helped Hillary's. She doesn't have any. But at least Warren is perceived as a sort of Bernie light. Or at least isn't thought of as a Wall Street crony as much as Hillary is. Uh, I think she's losing a lot of her cred, but especially now, which is a major concern for both the Occupy, sort of the Occupy Wall Street remnants within the Bernie Sanders crowd, as it is actually with many Trump supporters who are also concerned with big money influencing politics. Also, Elizabeth Warren is a female, and for some reason some reason, many potential Democratic voters care an awful lot about vaginas, at least more than they seem to care about qualifications or corruption. So I have to wonder, is Hillary just assuming the progressive side of the Democratic Party will fall in line without giving them anything? Because if Tim Kaine was intended to catch never-Trump Republicans, that strategy might have worked if, and this is a big if, Libertarian candidate Gary Johnson wasn't running for president. This could cost her big, because Gary Johnson will undoubtedly lure many of the centrists from both parties who are more in line with the libertarian ethos, which tends to not care so much about social issues, or rather takes a live and let live approach, which is, you know, whatever you do in your own personal life, in your bedroom, that's on you. I don't care. There shouldn't be any laws restricting personal choice, individual liberty. That's what they're all about. You know, who the hell cares, again, what personal choices people make? Let's stop wasting money on wars and fix the economy. That's their general position. And I think older generation, maybe a boomer age, or maybe between 35 and, and up, those will be the types that they'll siphon off, the older voters. And on the progressive side, you have Green Party candidate Jill Stein who is even further left than Bernie Sanders is. Cornell West, who endorsed Bernie, jumped ship to the Green Party recently. And ever since Bernie bent at the knee to Hillary, many burners are, are f fucking furious. And I saw with my own eyes the tremendous surge in popul popularity going to Stein after this event, which is evident on her various social media accounts. Because I follow, I follow all of these people, and I, like I said, I watch these things very closely. So reason number three, um, despite the media framing Trump's RNC speech as being foreboding and dictatorial, it was largely well received by a CNN audience, which is you know, fairly pro-Hillary. It even had 75% approval. Uh, I don't really have much more to say on that besides that what it shows is that CNN is pro-Hillary. We know this because, we know this for certain now because of the DNC leaks from WikiLeaks. But many of us already knew that there was a bias, not only anti-Trump, but more importantly anti-Bernie. Because we knew that they might say things, disparaging remarks regarding Trump, but he gets a, a large swath, a, a lo huge disproportionate swath of airtime. So even good or bad, publicity is publicity, whereas Bernie was being completely shunned. You know, Trump is still coming out ahead of Hillary by CNN's own polls. So that's a wrap as far as public opinion goes. If you're winning over hearts and minds in enemy, en enemy territory, even if reluctantly, that's a fucking wrap. You, you might as well stick a fork in this election. 
Okay, reason number two, the DNC leaks. This is huge. WikiLeaks released 20,000, roughly 20,000 hacked emails showing beyond a shadow of a doubt that the DNC cooked the nomination in favor of Hillary, which showed also collusion with many of the large media organizations like CNN, like MSNBC, many of the big name journalists, quote unquote journalists. Everybody knew this already. I mean, this really wasn't news, but it, it just confirmed what everybody sort of suspected all along. I've talked about this in another video that I made a while back, actually. What are the odds that Hillary would win six out of six consecutive coin tosses in the Iowa caucus? What are the odds? Or how many times did CNN call the debates in favor of Hillary when Bernie won overwhelmingly in public opinion polls? CNN even went so far as to take down poll results from their fucking website. Now, how corrupt must you be? How blatant? Not only did this jilt many of the the Bernie Sanders supporters, but it just confirmed what many already suspected, as I said. But more than that, it also confirmed Trump's, and this is important, This it confirmed Trump's media is biased narrative. So many Republicans who are still on the fence, independents, uh, first-time voters, even a few disillusioned Democrats, even a few disillusioned, disillusioned Bernie Democrats, quote-unquote Democrat, I mean, they're not really, he's... Bernie's as much a part of the Democratic Party as Trump is part of the Republican Party. And both these guys were not only outsider candidates, but they, they didn't even belong to these parties until, well, uh, until recently, anyway. So, this is going to win the independent vote. You know, a lot of these people, they're rubbing their chins like, hmm, you know, maybe there's something to Trump after all. And that's what's giving him his edge right now. It's not the Republican establishment. It's not the partisan Republicans like Mitt Romney's of the world who's endorsing Hillary Clinton. Mitt Romney is endorsing Hillary Clinton. So this is establishment endorsing establishment. But the it's the moderates. This is the groundswell is coming from the moderates. The one issue voters who are concerned with the TPP, independents, people on the fringes of both parties that feel their parties don't represent them. This is who he's winning. This is who is seeing the events unfold in the media and saying, wow, you know, Trump is right. Whether he's right on every issue, of course, that, I mean, that's ab absolutely, it's, he's not. But when it comes to media manipulation, okay, reason number one, Trump and Clinton have been neck and neck in most polls over the course of the last two months or so. Despite the media's portrayal of him as literally Hitler, yet they praise Hillary Clinton constantly as being stunning and brave. This stunning and brave woman, you know, she's a strong figure, she's qualified, she's all these things, these glowing reviews of her. And yet, going up literally against the devil, against hit, literal Hitler, they're neck and neck. The thing about that is, though, Trump has the uncanny ability, thanks in large part to social media, to talk over the mainstream news outlets like CNN, like MSNBC, and even Fox, as we saw with Megyn Kelly, the spat that they had, and all the things that went down. He's made several tactical moves since the beginning that have kept him several steps ahead of everyone else. Everyone, all of his other competitors, and everyone in the media, everyone in the establishment, for example, he was smart enough to brand the media as being corporate, unfair, dishonest, etc., way ahead of the general election. And every major recent news event, again, has reinforced his dishonest media narrative. And people can see that. His trademark branding of, of his adversaries, Lion Ted, Crooked Hillary, etc. We know this matters because whenever he gives out a nickname, there's a massive spike in Google searches, like, Is Hillary Clinton Crooked? which you can see if you go if you visit their Google Analytics page for yourselves with all the stats and numbers hundreds of thousands of searches that means something because people are asking questions again i'm not trying to build him up i'm not saying i endorse him i don't support him because i don't necessarily even i don't like trump as a candidate necessarily or even as a person 
to be honest. Doesn't mean that he couldn't be a good president. I don't know that. He said certainly done some inflammatory said some inflammatory remarks, but they've been tactical. I don't I don't believe that he believes half of the things he said actually. If you really pay close attention, like for example, a while back when he made remarks uh, regarding abortion, he said, "If, if, and this is you have to read between the lines with this guy. If abortion is illegal, I think women should be punished for getting them. Now." Abortion is not illegal. So it's sort of it's sort of trickery. I don't know why at that point he was already trying he had already won kind of the evangelical vote over. He was out of the Bible belt when he was when they were doing the primaries. It was kind of weird, but anyway. The political systems which I advocate for are very outside the mainstream. More in line with an organization like Free World Charter or you know, Venus Project or the Zeitgeist Movement, things along those lines. A little bit different. I mean, I'm not a hard line when it comes to anything, but I'm open to ideas, especially ideas that involve applying the scientific method to manage intelligent management of civilization. I'm simply describing the climate, the, polit- the current political climate, and, and citing the reasons why I think he'll win. I think if we were to talk about this honestly... All but his all but his die hard followers know that Trump is kind of a sketchy dude. Not releasing his tax returns, his speaking style, his business record, uh, lawsuits against him, evading questions. But he has done more to crack open the two party paradigm than anyone, Bernie Sanders included. Although Bernie did do a great deal as well to start a movement. And even though he as a candidate is sort of falling by the wayside because of his perceived sellout to Hillary Clinton and who knows what's going on there I mean we really don't know if he was offered what kind of deal he may have been offered or if he made a tactical move to try and get some things into the platform or you know even I wouldn't even put it outside the realm of possibility that there could have been threats against him or his family I don't know I mean I'm not conspiracy theorizing but I'm just saying all options out on the table we don't really know Bernie did do a great deal as well to start a movement until he endorsed Hillary. And as of the recording of this video, he even told his delegates at the DNC in Philly that they need to accept the real world and vote Hillary Clinton. Of course, his delegates booed, and many of Sanders' followers are outside protesting despite pleas from him not to. But he started a revolution, man. In the hearts and minds of many people, this is their guy. And they don't want to see him, you know, bend his knee to Hillary Clinton, to the Clinton family. The people aren't going to bow down to Hillary Clinton. They'll burn your bust, like they said, or they'll go to Jill Stein. A handful will go to uh, Gary Johnson. And I know people don't like to hear this, but a percentage, and I don't know what percentage, but a percentage will, will certainly go to Trump. They definitely will. Those who will spite vote for Trump, those who hear the message of the anti-TPP and the rebuilding of infrastructure, people like that, they'll go to Trump. The people whose only concern was that. So with all that said, I'm calling it for Trump now. Short of something really dramatic happening to turn it around for Hillary, like you know, dumping Kane in favor of Bernie, which isn't likely to happen at this point, or in the really... I, and I just I can't see this happening. If she absolutely trounces Trump during the national debates, which is so unlikely, given that she's been shunning all the media appearances, she didn't even want to debate Bernie at all. Bernie had to fight just to get two more debates added on. And that's that. So my final note on this would be this. Even though Trump is likely to win, in this crazy election season with two incredibly unfavorable choices. This is the first time that a third-party candidate could potentially swing the election. Both Libertarian Party nominee Gary Johnson and Green Party nominee Jill Stein stand a fighting chance. And some people will say, no, you're throwing away your vote to vote for Trump or whatever. It's a Ralph Nader. It really isn't. This is a very, with the internet, with Twitter, social media, this is an extremely, extremely different climate than what we've ever seen. The amount of transparency is massive. The amount of influence is massive. The amount, the ability for people, and we saw this 
during the Arab Spring for people to use social media as a tool to instantaneously bring facts to light, organize events, organize protests. This is unprecedented. And the ability for things to go viral in this environment, I mean, it's off, it's off the scale. So anything can happen. Uh, I think they stand. I think both these candidates stand a fighting chance. I absolutely think more people should check them out. Both are currently rising in the polls, with Gary Johnson polling as high as uh, 13, 11. I saw some polls, 11%. I've seen other polls as high as 13%. For the people who do not know, any candidate who can poll at 15% or above by law must be allowed onto the, the debate stage at the national debates alongside Trump and Clinton. So, if other, if other fresh voices could be heard, I really feel that a third party could win over a large swath of the public, especially millennial voters, and even if not win, get, certainly outperform Hillary Clinton. I think a third, I think absolutely a third party, probably most likely Libertarian Party this time around, more so than the Green Party, but there could be an upset. I mean, you really don't know. It's, at this point, it's, it's still kind of difficult as far as you know, the smaller kind of particulars, you, it's really hard to predict. But I still predict that Trump will win. But uh, the third party could get a larger share of votes than even Hillary Clinton. I think they could 100% certainly outperform Hillary Clinton, a third party. So you'll have Trump with the maximum amount of votes. You could possibly have a third party and then Hillary Clinton in third. And that would definitely pave the way for a non-duopoly, you know, oligarchy, corporate president in the next election in four years. People don't see this, but if Trump gets in and he starts doing a bad job and people think he's shitty, I I 110% believe that the people, just like what we're seeing with Bernie now, how his supporters are bummed, if, if Trump disappoints to such an extreme level that I can see that I can see his followers revolting. I can see them saying, all right. For, you're going to give you your four years because that's what they got to do. And then fuck you. You're out. And then I think it's it's anybody's game as far as the next party that could possibly get in.